Hello everyone, let's talk about intellectual property. If you know me for a little while already, you might have noticed that the name of the company has, and also the name of this channel ha has changed and it has changed two times. It was first uh, Welcome Solutions when I uh, registered it uh, two years ago and then it uh, changed its name uh, to Odyssey Careers earlier this year and now uh, you can see me under the name Ontology of Value. So the question would be, what the heck is happening? So first to say, what is intellectual property? Well, intellectual property is all kinds of human design. It can be an innovation, it can be a method, it can be an algorithm. It can be a logo, it can be a piece of art, it can be a design, it can be a brand, it can be a concept, it can be a motto, it can be anything that a human originally created. It can even be a joke or a song. Uh, depending on what type of intellectual property we're talking about, there are different types of protection for it. So we can talk about uh, copyrights. A uh, copyright is something that you are naturally own if you create a new piece of text, piece of uh, piece of music, piece of art, uh, or I think piece of code as well. You have copyrights by design, unless of course you are an employee and you do it in your working time, then uh, it works in a way that your employer becomes the owner of the intellectual property that you produce. That's how. That's how employment works. Uh, but other than that, you are the owner, sole owner of the intellectual property that you produce. And it all sounds simple, but in practice it's often much more difficult and much more complicated than it seems. Because to be uh, the official owner of the intellectual property, you have to first demonstrate that you indeed created the property. And secondly, that it's indeed novel, so it's distinctive from other pieces of intellectual property in the space. And uh, intellectual property law is quite complicated and it's getting more and more complicated as the space of intellectual property becomes more and more dense. And my prediction is that it will only get worse in the, in the incoming years. And that's also why if you consider creating your own business or if you have friends who are starting businesses or if you as an individual would like to know better how this world works, then definitely you should learn a little bit about intellectual property. And in this episode, I would like to specifically talk about trademarks, so about protecting brands uh, for companies. So what is a trademark? A trade trademark can be wording, such as Coca-Cola, or a piece of design, such as Coca-Cola's logo, that makes the company uh, distinctive from other companies in the space. So the purpose of uh, protecting design or uh, a trademark is to uh, secure the company's sole rights to trade under certain brand. The principle is that a trademark protects the company from being misled by other companies. For instance, if there is a Chinese company Coke Coke or, or Coca Cola, then Coca-Cola might object that other company from trading in the same space, in the space of soft drinks for instance, because that might potentially uh, mislead their clients and uh, lead to losses in the company because some of the clients might mess the brand Coca-Cola with another brand and by by share by virtue of of a mistake buy into another company's product so to prevent such a fraud uh, the trademarks were, were specifically created you should know that there are multiple different types of trademarks not just one it can be a word sign um, such as the name of the company. It can also be a so-called figurative sign, which means nothing else than a logo. Or it can be a combined sign, which is a combination between a word sign and a figurative sign. It, there are also multiple other types of trademarks, but they are way less popular. Between the three types, well, I personally feel that the word, uh, word sign is always best to protect because it means that other companies cannot register domains uh, under similar names as yours and also cannot trade. So if you have your word sign protected, you will be more visible online, you will be easier to find. And today, online marketing is everything. If you're not visible online, you don't exist. So a word sign is the best way to protect 
your visibility and um, a new market share online. Uh, however, word signs are also naturally hard to protect because um, to protect um, a certain brand you have to not only be distinct from other brands but you also have to be substantially distinct so that means if, you, if your name is a synonym of another uh, another company's name or if your name is uh, like just differs by a few letters uh, this is enough for another company to object your your trademark so uh, in that sense uh, since there's already millions of trademarks registered it's extremely hard to find a new catchy name uh, for a company that doesn't resemble any of the existing uh, trademark names. I mean, the more abstract your name is, the more chances you have to protect the trademark, but then at the same time, the less it tells about your company and its objectives. So that's always a tra trade-off. However, if you have a chance to protect a word sign, I would say this is the best choice you can make. Yet another uh, type of uh, trademark is a uh, figurative sign. Uh, figurative signs, or other, in other words, logos, they are substantially easier to protect than word signs. It's much easier to make yourself distinct with a distinct logo than with a word sign because there are so many more combinations of possible designs and possible coloring schemes and, uh, and of course, uh, company names and the way of stylizing it nicely than there are just uh, word signs. However, well, on the other hand, uh, there's always a shadow to it. So on the other hand, it's, it's, it just doesn't protect you from other companies register, registering uh, signs and trademarks under similar names as yours. The downside is also that uh, in case your branding changes, so in case you're, you would like to refresh your logo after a few years, uh, well, your old logo is no longer actual, so and many companies do it. They do rebrand and refresh their logo every now and then, every few years, and and then you have to get a new protection from for a new logo as the old one doesn't doesn't matter anymore. So well, I would say this is a weaker type of sign than a word sign. However, in case it's hard for you to register word sign, it's better to have a figurative sign than nothing. So if your space is too dense to register a word sign but there is still a little space for you to to get in with your logo then i would say uh, i would go for it and lastly we have combined signs which are uh, combinations between uh, names and logos if you if you protect that, that type of sign it means that other companies are not allowed to trade under the similar name and similar logo at the same time so it's a bit of a trade-off between the two and you should know also that a company name and a trade trademark are two different things. One company can own multiple different uh, trademarks for multiple products and services. And uh, the trademark can be owned by uh, by a company, so a legal person, but it can also be owned by an individual. So you can also apply for a trademark. For instance, if you have a product that you're like designing right now and you are planning to brand uh, in the in some, few, some distant future, uh, you might think of creating a branding for this product already. Although officially uh, to get a trademark, you have to trade with a product already, um, but uh, you might also start from just creating a website for the prototype and, and putting a TM uh, sign on it and applying for a trademark. It's, it's a problem of a chicken and egg. So what to start with? Do you start with trading or do you start with uh, protecting a protecting a brand? I would say um, it's best to start with both. And how much protection does a trademark actually give you? Well, of course, it's not forever and it's not for all the possible products and services and for all the possible regions in the world. You have to know three things. First of all, trademarks are usually granted for 10 years, but you also have a priority to re-register the trademark after 10 years. So if you would like to protect it for longer, uh, then you can just uh, repay the, uh, the fee for registration and and then you can keep on using your trademark uh, without any problem. So in this case, it's different as with uh, from patents because uh, with patents, you only get protection for certain amount of time without the possibility to prolong. Uh, but with trademarks, you can prolong for as long as you wish, as long as there is cash on the table, of course. And second thing is, um, it would be a massive redundancy if one brand could be um, protected for all types of services and products. That's why there are uh, 45 different classes of uh, goods and on services that you can uh, choose to register 
your trademark for. And the first 34 classes are, uh, are secured for goods, so physical products, and the last 11 are, are secured for, for the services. So wh whenever you apply for a trademark, you, cast, you have to specify in which class you want to protect, uh, protect your brand. And you can protect your brand for multiple classes and for each additional class there is some additional fee. fee. But in general you can uh, apply for multiple classes at a time. And once you apply you cannot extend the, the number of classes in the procedure. But if there are other companies that um, object to your trademark you can also make a compromise and reduce the number of classes to, to find a compromise with another party. So you can never extend but you can you can decrease the amount of classes in the process. You should also know that uh, officially to have a protection you should trade in a certain class. Why there is no reason to apply for more classes than you physically are thinking of. There is no reason to apply for all 45 classes just to have a sole right to use a certain brand because um, if you don't trade in a certain area, if you don't have any activities in certain related to certain class, other companies might easily object it and get on, on your territory um, in the process. You should also know that the protection you get is not for all reasons of the world, but it's only for the local office in which you apply for a trademark. Uh, European Union has one joint office where you can apply for protection in all the member states of the European Union, but in general it's hard to protect this way because um, if in any of the member states there is a there is a brand register that uh, is somewhat similar to to the brand you're uh, applying for, uh, you might get objected. That's why uh, in general it's hard to uh, protect your brand for the whole European Union. Uh, but you can also uh, register your brand in any of the member states of the European Union. For instance, uh, Benelux countries have their own office. Um, Poland has its own office, uh, France has its own office, etc. And that's much easier to protect. Of course, uh, if you only uh, apply for protection in one country, that means that uh, your brand is not protected in other countries. So in other countries, other companies, other individuals have a right to use the same or similar brand for trading uh, their services. However, if you want to protect your uh, trademark worldwide, it would be extremely expensive because the bill for protecting it for the whole world would be hundreds of thousands of euros or dollars. But in general, uh, most companies uh, choose for protection in their maternal country where they have headquarters and this is enough. Once we know that there are already millions of trademarks registered, how do you know if the brand you think of is already taken or you can still you still have a chance to register and protect this brand. The best way to discover if your brand is protectable is to use the TMU. It's a world worldwide database of trademark official trademark registry. And browsing through this website, you can you can figure out if the if the brand you're thinking of uh, is still a, uh, is still available. So you can browse through multiple regions in the world, multiple classes and types of trademarks. You have to be careful because uh, this registry will only show you the matches that match precisely with the phrase uh, or, an, or, or a word that you uh, put in. So it will not show you synonyms and it will not show you similar words that uh, only differ with a f by a few letters or are translations of your words. So it will not show you French or German or other versions of your, for instance, English word that you uh, that you type in. Whereas in fact, these might be already uh, good grounds for other companies to object your trademark if your brand is so coming so close. So even a translation or a synonym might be already a problem to other companies in the space who trade in the same areas as you. That's why uh, my advice for you is always look for a professional, professional uh, patent office or some other like patent specialist or trademark specialist who specializes in intellectual property law, especially trademark law, because those people have specialized software and they have uh, knowledge necessary to tell if uh, your brand is safe to register or not. So what type of cost do we talk about? Well, uh, in the European Union, the application for the whole EU costs uh, 850 euros for the first class and then 50, 50 euros for the second class and then 150 for every other class on top of that and in every member state of the European Union it's uh, uh, 250 euros 
uh, for the first uh, first class, so it's cheaper than in, in the whole European Union. So in general, these costs are like not as high, given that uh, most of the applicants are legal pe persons, is companies. So. For most companies, this is not a high cost to take. The difficulty is not as much about how to raise funds for a trademark, but more how to protect your brand, how to make sure that you are distinctive enough, how to make sure that you uh, you can defend yourself in the process when once other companies potentially have objections toward your trademark. How can you demonstrate that you trade under certain brand already and that your brand is, uh, is indeed novel? Today, it's already hard, and I think that in the next years, it will be even harder because the space is getting more and more dense. That's why even though it's hard to register a trademark today, I would strongly advise you to try because yeah, the farther it gets, the, the harder it will be. And now about the elephant in the room. What happened to Welcome Solutions and then, uh, and then Odyssey Careers and why Ontology of Value is Ontology of Value today? Earlier this year, I applied for a trademark for, for Welcome Solutions, which is uh, what my company was named from the beginning. And then in the process, it turned out that there is another entity based in another member state of European Union, which has protection for a company name that is not the same as my company name, but it's partially overlaps. And uh, since the range of products and services is the same, the other party uh, had claimed for protection for that name. That's why the other party uh, objected the trademark application and we found a compromise. Well, I will find a, another name for a company. I, of course, didn't want to cause any trouble. And when I was first setting a company two years ago, I didn't really think about international reach. I didn't really think about, hey, is there any company uh, anywhere in European Union which has any name in any form similar to my name? Like, it didn't really uh, cross my mind because uh, when you first start, especially with your first business, you think about, hey, can I register the name I like? Uh, is there any, anyone else who is already registered in my office, in my maternal country? You don't really think too much about the future. You don't think about worldwide reach of your of your uh, activity so back then i didn't really give it a thought and i think even if i did uh, i'm not sure if i would even discover that there is any potential conflict because at the end of the day it's also a matter of interpretation whether or not you have a, a potential conflict of interest or not but anyways the company was uh, very nice i don't have any bad feelings about it no bad blood and their lawyer is extremely nice and uh, we found a compromise pretty quickly. So I, I started looking for another name and I first thought about Odyssey Careers. Careers because I work on career advisory, but also Odyssey because I felt that this um, myth of Odyssey and Odysseus is a great uh, metaphor of life and professional life in particular. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, research um, in collaboration with a patent office that helps me with intellectual property right now uh, quickly revealed that there are so many companies using the term Odyssey or its synonym or some other like translations of the word that it would also be probably hard to protect and I didn't want to fall into the same trouble again. That's why I started looking for another name and in the end we set on Ontology of Value, uh, which I think is a, a, a really nice name because now after two years I have a better picture of what I want to do in this company. Indeed, I want to help professionals build value in the job market and I want to understand better where value is and how people value things and, uh, and also what is value in general, why certain products or certain projects gain in value, why they are perceived as valuable, uh, how economy works and where the value in the in the market is and what are the sources of value today, what will the future look like and I think it's a fascinating subject and I think in the job markets and in economy uh, money only follows value. Value is the real underlying currency and money always follows value and reflects value, it's just a shadow of value, which is comes with delay often. Ontology is also a term taken from uh, philosophy. It means a nature of something. So in fact, this company is is, is named now the nature of value, and I, I and I love it. I think it perfectly describes what my scope of interest is. Because I've always been into sociology, I've always been into economy, even though I studied uh, psychology and uh, neuroscience, but I, my passions were always circulating around economy and job market as well. So I think, yeah, this well describes my interests and the scope of the company and the mission of the company. Okay, so this is like in brief, 
in my short lecture about intellectual property. Uh, if you think of any brand or if you, uh, if you have a, um, a friend who is now starting a company or has a fresh company, please uh, share this material with them because it's so important today to protect your brand. And I can tell you, if you don't do it and at some point you have to change your branding and company name, it's so much hassle, it's so, it takes so much time and you will lose also, you will lose a lot of clients and you will lose a lot of recognition. You will kind of have to start over with your website, with your SEO, with your presence online. So it's a major, major loss. That's why it's so extremely important to protect uh, your intellectual property and protect your brand from the first day. Please share with your friends who might potentially need this material. Uh, don't forget to protect uh, protect your baby, your company and your brand and uh, take care. And if you would like to uh, learn more about the job market, a little bit about business development, but also opportunities on in the job market and all kinds of other information that might help you build your professional life, then please subscribe to the channel. And uh, I'm open for discussing. If you have any questions about intellectual property and especially trademarks, please let me know below. And if you have any stories like this, please share below. Uh, let's suffer together <laughs> and uh, take care guys. See you next time.